for round one, we won the die roll and we're going to take the play. This hand seems as good as any. Uh, we need to hit our fourth land drop. This could be an 18 land deck, who knows. But, uh, yep, it's definitely a keep. No, I would not like to mulligan. Alright, we'll say planes and pass the turn. Oh, wow. This is awkward as enough as it is. I feel like the main problem we're going to have with this deck is too much removal in hand and not a threat to make it worth anything. Just going to have six. Luckily, this guy still gets through even with one blocker on board. Let's see. He was the one scooping up all the two drops. All right, awesome. So we're going to have a... Th three drop and then a four drop, and our best four drop in the deck as well. F6. Um, this guy is really hard to block without getting two for one. Like, he's just really hard to not get two for one. They have to have basically a three toughness guy. Sure, he can attack. I don't care. If he plays another guy, I'm probably going to not attack. Wow, curving out. Because uh, I don't want to be able well. Would he trade his train condor for my master diversion? Actually, I do. Now that this guy is going to be on the battlefield, I just want to clear the battlefield up. And I'd rather him trade his train condor for this than that. So I am going to attack. Target the Sentinel Sliver. And we'll see if he blocks. I don't think he will. It's possible I wanted to tap the train contour because he'd be more likely to trade. Because what he doesn't know is that I want to trade so I can get this reaver online. But I probably don't care because I have double pacifism in hand. So I'm just going to double pacifism, tap down his next threat, and destroy him. This is pretty insane draw. It's going to be hard for him to race, too. So, right now, I just don't want him to play two creatures. I just want him to play any threat that doesn't have a triggered ability on impact and some basically something I can pacify. Let's see if he's going to try to race. He is going to try to race. What he doesn't know is that that's not going to work out too well for him. At this point, I can F6 because I have no interaction. All right, awesome. So now I'm going to attack, tap it down, see what happens. He probably has that stupid C-kite, but luckily that, I mean, that's going to kill my Master Diversion, which is unfortunate, but then I'm just going to slam a Sender Vampire. And he's still going to have to discard a card. So, I mean, it's pretty telegraphed that he has that 2-3 flash. But I, I can't not attack. I could just attack with him, but then it gives him the opportunity to block. And either way, if he attacks with it, I'm just going to slam this vampire uh, second main phase, and he won't be able to attack. Alright, that was another option. Uh... Okay, exacting this. Let's see if this hits. Looks like it is. Trigger. So much value. And then I'm going to get to play Sender and have literally eight power on the board and a blocker for his train condor and anything he jumps. F6. Okay. If he has a, if he attacks, he obviously has a trick, but I'm gonna bite either way. Actually, I don't know if I will. All right, no, he's on the back burner. Okay. So at this point, I think I just want to slam both pacifisms. I know it's not; these aren't the greatest things to hit, but. Uh, 
he's not going to have a board wipe, and it's just purely a tempo play to get in as much damage as possible and basically put him in a position he can't where he can't win. Face that. All right, yeah. <laughs> We kind of do the nuts that game. Not every game will be that easy. All right, in the board, he was blue, white, which means that, well, I forgot I put him in. Yeah, he didn't have anything that I'm really concerned about. He did have a couple more two drops, but I'm just going to go over the top of him anyways. And still don't want Celestial Flare because I have enough removal already. Alright.